Hey Dragon Brood, what's up? Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We just came off of doing three mutate decks in a row. So be sure to check those videos out if you're interested in any of the mutate type stuff. We did three different decks. Then now I was thinking, what if we took a color wedge and did three different types of decks for that? Kind of another crazy experiment. We'll see how it goes. But interestingly, we're going to start kind of in the middle of both. So this is going to be an Abzan Mutate deck. That's right, so you get a fourth Mutate deck, but then we're gonna do an Abzan, we'll call it humans base list, and then we're just gonna do a straight Abzan aggro list. So you're gonna get those all over the next three days. And if you're into those colors, maybe this will be fun for you. If not, you just get to watch a cool experiment play out. So we'll just see how it goes. But let's take a look at our first deck, which is the Abzan Mutate deck. Now, as usual, I want to tell everybody, if you're not used to watching these videos, I generally tell everybody to watch to the end because we go over the deck right now, we play some games, and then at the end we talk about what did or didn't work and things we would change in this list. So it gives you a head start on building the next version and kind of be ahead of the curve a little bit. But again, if you've watched our other Mutate decks, you kind of, videos, you kind of know that those decks all had the same type of starting point. So we are again going to go with four Goose, four Paradise Druid, or symbiote however some versions will probably play the arboreal grazer here but i'm a big fan of the goose in these builds now with us playing white in this list we are going to try three of the cub wardens we're going to play two of the hunt master liger three dirge bats which are a great removal card for this deck we're going to play three gym razor a full set of the migratory great horn which might be the best card in this deck and the reason to play this if you're playing mutate we're going with two shifting ceratops main mostly because there's a lot of blue in the format right now there's spell counter decks there's the uh urian decks garuda decks you know so if you do land a shifting ceratops with any benefits or bonuses on it that can be enough to end the game then we're playing two sterics which is another way just to get things on the table and then we're playing one nathroi here and should be pretty good for the extra lifelink, but we'll see how it goes. We at least have all the right colors to cast it easier in this particular deck. Lands, we're not doing anything fancy. One plains, two swamp, three forest, a full set of all of the shock lands. Uh, we do get to play one of the triomes, so we're definitely playing a full set there. And again, one bonders enclave. So again, let's watch through the games, hang around for the end of the video, and then we'll talk it out. Oh, we may have to reset Arena here. It's actually running real slow for me. Though, to be fair, I have been putting a bunch of decks and stuff in this morning. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this hand. This gives us plenty to work with. And see, and this is nice because if we really felt the need to, well... I guess we just wasted a good hand. Alright, this is one of those ones I feel like I'm getting set up. Because anybody who names himself Puppy Boss is probably just a stone cold killer. Uh, definitely mulliganing this. We don't have anything early here. Uh, this is better. Not sure what we want to put back in this list, though. Uh, hmm. Opponent's playing Luris, so we're going to assume this is no... I mean, it's possible this is also just the uh, cycling deck. And if so, this is just going to be a rough one for us. Oh, well, we're not playing anything till 2 anyway, so this can come in time. That's fine. So the good news is, we will be set up to play an Amari on three, which isn't bad. And if something were to die, we could potentially get it back with a Boneyard Lurker, so maybe. Oh, this is just Red Black Sacrifice. This is going to be bad for us. Especially if this is a Priest of Forgotten Gods. We're going to be almost done from the get-go. But let's not fret. 
Maybe it's possible something goes our way. I doubt it, though. Good news is they can't steal this. So we have that working for us. Yep, Red Horde Butcher, sure. Now, this is where we have to get creative, because we don't necessarily want to tap the Paradise Druid. Well, okay, now that we got another two-mana thing, that changes the narrative a little bit. Well, either way, we're going to use this mana on this turn. Because the problem is here, they're most likely, of the last three cards, going to have another creature. So this means they could play it, sacrifice everything to the priest. This trigger will go off, dealing damage, which, if the Paradise Druid is tapped, would kill our Paradise Druid. Which is definitely not what we want to happen here. So, we're just going to go Symbiote, Symbiote. Then if they do steal one, I mean, they do still get to wipe our board. Because they would steal one, sack two things, use that to kill the Paradise Druid, blah, blah, blah. Like, so, it's not great for us, but we're at least trying to set ourselves up and give us an opportunity. Uh, still not interested in blocking here. If they're going to kill our stuff, we have to make them do it the hard way. And we do have Polycranos if we draw a land next turn, because this Paradise Druid is going to die one way or the other. I'm pretty certain on that. Yep, here's the claim the firstborn, not a surprise. Good news is a lot of these decks only main deck claim the firstborn as their way to steal things. So if we stick any of these, they're all pretty big. Okay, a big titan, sure. So they're not going to sack the Dreadhorde Butcher at all here. I don't know, maybe they will. Let's see, I don't know. I don't see how we're getting out of this, though. I think this was just a bad situation for us. This is one of those hands where we really needed a, uh, a goose on turn one. think hmm I mean I really want this in case they get an oven but I don't think we can do much about it I think we just have to go bigger all right so we'll be discarding this gym razor I mean, I guess I could have kept the Gym Razor, because it's one of the few things we can actually play. But the truth is, if we don't get a fourth mana, we're, we're kind of wrecked anyway, regardless of the situation. Yep, I think that's going to do it. Yep, we, we had needed him to not have an extra creature there. So yeah, not a lot we can do. We go first. We have a Goose. We don't have one of our three mana creatures, uh, mutators here. So that's a little tough, but yeah, we'll go ahead and keep it. I mean, worst case scenario, we set up to try to play something on three. Alright, they then come in to play tap, so that doesn't hurt. And then we'll just pass. And I think if we get a choice... Now, what are we playing against here? This is just a big spell counter silly deck. It probably is. Alright. If that's the case, let's do this. And we'll just see what the opponent's up to. Nope, it was just a growth spiral. or something. There's so many counter spell decks right now in the best of one setups. Alright. 
I mean, I guess we run the Ceratops in, and if they have a way to kill it, they just kill it. Nope. They just had a Brazen Bar. Interesting. They didn't have that. Okay. Alright, Wilderness Reclamation, sure. I mean, if that's the case, maybe our creature just goes the distance. I mean, it means Dirge Bat's pretty bad. You don't have a lot to really target. Um, I mean, if we're going to do something with this, let's just try to put this on the Gilded Goose. Doing it like this, so if they bounce the goose. Uh, if you cast this spell during your main phase. So it's just draw three cards? Okay, sure. I mean, I'm assuming they have, like, the wolves and whatever, but... Okay, that resolves. I guess their plan is to make flying sharks. I mean, it sucks that the sharks fly, but uh, not a lot we can do about it. So we can attack, let them block this. Then we can <clears throat> simply play a non-creature spell, right? Yeah, okay. So that's not that bad. Let's go ahead and attack here. Alright, ambusher, sure. Okay, the question is do we want to give it trample? Because I don't know that we do. Because we're probably going to need all six. One, two, three, four, five, six. But, I mean, that's assuming they don't have a counter, too. If they have a counter, this is all a moot point, regardless. So, yeah, let's just let it happen. Oh, did they have another one? Oh, they had an unsummon. That's unfortunate. Okay, now that we know they have an unsummon, we're going to pay four for that. Okay, one for the other thing. Or actually, do we just play this? Get it onto the table. That'd be four, five, six. That is a thing we could do. Then we could play it onto the Paradise Druid. Okay, sure. I mean, we're going to get all this back, so it's not like the worst thing in the world. And they don't have the Ambusher, so we could do lots worse there. Our creatures. Play this. Take two. Play this. Alright, now let's see if that turns into something. Hmm. I felt the need to play that on their turn, so they must have something on their hand. Or in their hand, they want to use this mana for. So I need five for this. One, two, three, four, five. So it only leaves me three. Can we bait the opponent? Actually, maybe we can. What if we make it look like we're trying to get the Ceratops back? Then they would counter. One, two, three, four, five. And then we could kill the Ambusher, maybe? Alright, so let's target the Paradise. All right, we got what we wanted out of that. Uh, they can attack for three, four, five, six, seven. We don't have a way to give anything to trample. I mean, uh, I mean, I think we just put this on the goose, really, because then at least we can block something if we need it to. 
That seems tired. And the goose isn't going to do much else mana-wise. Okay. Uh, the opponent's not going to... We're not going to block any of his creatures. Or their creatures. So, I mean, if they have another one, they have another one. I mean, we can't do anything about it. Alright. Okay, they didn't have it. So, we're not in awful shape here. And we have enough mana to get this off as well. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they only have one card in hand. So, hopefully it's not a spell counter. Alright, they didn't do much of anything, actually. And they left everything back to block. So, that's kind of ideal. We can turn this into a 3-5. That seems good. Don't want to go too crazy. Oh, they actually it got through. Oh boy. Um. Okay then. Guess we kill this. Yeah. All right. Okay. Opponent goes first. And they're playing Umari. That means they're playing a creature deck of some sort. If it's all... You know what? Let's keep it. Because if it's all aggro, and we in some way can start gaining life, like, we, in theory, could outgain whatever they're going to be doing. I mean, it sounds a little crazy, but... I don't know. Paradise Fields. Okay. Not sure what they're up to, but we're just going to try to make a bunch of tokens and see if we can outrace them. Alright, Mari's down. I mean, it's possible they could also be playing Mutate Sup as well, so we have to keep that in mind. Or we could just be in a situation where we just have to pull the Mutate trigger next turn. Oh, we don't have double white yet. Uh, we might just be on this plan or mutating one of these. <clears throat> Bean Darson. Oh boy, what are they going to go looking for? Not interested in blocking. I mean, we can get that four life back pretty easily. Sea Dash Rock to push, sure. Okay, that's an interesting one. I'm just going to go big here. Mostly because if we can get the deter the opponent from attacking, as soon as we go to mutate it, we're going to get six counters. And then we'll start being able to fight things as well if we need to. That being said, the opponent can go search for a six mana thing right now. Oh, they had a murderous rider. Boo. Yep, still no block. Alright, I think it's time for us to find a white land deck. We would like to get some of this life back. Oh, so they are playing some mutate stuff. Look at that. Interesting, though, that they're playing mutate stuff and the Fiend Artisan because they're going to be less inclined to go get the other cards once you have uh, extra mutate on them. I always have to slow down the mutating because I feel like I'm going to put stuff on the wrong, or click the wrong button. Because they're opposite of how the uh, adventure cards are. Because adventure is spell on the left, creature on the right. These are creature on the left, mutate on the right. So it's very possible you're going to click the wrong thing that you're not intending to. Okay, randomly we could get some value out of this gem razor, possibly. Alright, 
One, two, three, four, five, six. What are they going to go get? Sterics? That would be... Okay. Okay. That's fair. We knew that was a thing. Alright, so now the question is... Do we just want to get extra tokens, or do we want to diversify our interest? So I think the plan should be this. Then we'll mutate one of these. And then we'll attack. I mean, they gotta block something. Oh. Okay, they're at one. I mean, they may be able to kill two things here. They have enough mana. That's for sure. We do have a hasty creature that may matter. Or if we can get another haste thing, or uh, not a haste, but another mutate thing that we can put on the other symbiote, we could be okay. Oh, sadly, this is going to let him get a thing back. What do we have? Oh, they can go get a great horn. Oh, no. That's bad for us. Well played by the opponent. Yeah, I think we're wrecked now. Unless we get a great horn or something of our own. Let's see. That's also possible. I mean, we are at 29 life, so we're not hurting at the moment. I mean, we could even get one of our own Dirge Bats and be able to kill their Boneyard Lurker. Which would probably be ideal, but let's see. Alright. We need something here, though. Hey, look at that. That was right on time. We get to kill their flyer, and then we'll punch through for the win. They have nothing with reach on the table? Nope. Whoa, all right, all right. Whew. And we were on the draw there, too. Got lucky. Okay, opponent's going to go first, which is a little disappointing, but we'll keep it. Hoping we'll get a goose that can survive. If so, we'll go ahead and blow things up, go right into a great horn. Okay, well that's nice to get a backup goose. Just in case things go sideways for some reason. Passion Orator, is this like a super game life deck? This is the one that gains life, right? Yeah, okay. This is gonna be weird. But, we're gonna put this over. We're gonna get... I think if we want to give ourselves a chance of playing the Cub Warden, we have to get a Planes. Which doesn't feel great, but... It is what it is. I mean, we do have a Goose, so we could, in some ways... Do that we may just great horn on great horn though and try to get two lands and then that'll set us up pretty good for whatever we want to do after that but it kind of depends on what the opponent plays here too though because it's possible that if they tap down we may try to sneak umari on the table assuming we draw land if not we'll just do more migratory great horn action You got a clear attack window, opponent. If you want it, come get it. Oh, charming prince. What the what? It's not a cycling deck. Could be a weird humans or a 
Winota deck and they just didn't get their non-humans. That's very possible. That was a lot of decision making just to play that and attack us, but, you know. Okay, if we set this up, no matter what, we should be able to Goose and Warden next turn. And then... Yeah, let's just do that. And we'll just double up our lands. So we're going to get another forest. And a swamp. To make sure, in case we draw the uh, Dirge Bat, making sure we can mutate it. I'm going to go ahead and... Well, do we want to attack? Trading three for two? Nah, it's just pass. Because in some ways, we can kind of use the Great Horn as bait and get them to use a removal card so they can keep attacking. Or a bounce spell or something, and then we can play our Goose, Cub Warden, do what we want to do the following turns. We'll see how incentivized the opponent is, though. I mean, if they attack, I'm going to block anyway. That wasn't really much of a question. All right, so... They didn't attack. What are they wanting us to do? What are they waiting on? I'm just gonna... This is enticing enough for somebody to counter. And we can get it back anyway if we really want it back. They have something at instant speed. Not sure what it is. Okay, just a quench. Well, we don't really need Paradise Druid, so... If they have two quenches, they have two quenches. Oh, I was going to say, if so, we got two things out of their hands. So that would have been fine anyway. And then I'm going to pass, just in case they want to use a uh, Petty Theft on the Brazen Borrower here. Because they might. Oh, raise arm. So this is Winota. Yeah, sometimes we get to be smarter than the average bear. Yep. Good news is they only get two triggers here, and then they'll get some life. We also get to kill both of these. Oh, man. Come on, Dirge Bat. <laughs> Dirge Bat, where are you? I mean, the thing is, if they just don't have any other not... I mean, if they only have two gigantic non-humans or something in the deck, this is still going to hurt. I mean, it could be like Yodaro and something. Oh, that guy. That's one of the worst things we could have seen. Oh, goodness. This is a human, though. So, technically, if we deal with these, then we don't have to deal with any other crap from Minota. At least, unless they have, like, something with haste. Which, those decks do play a few things. Alright, well, this brings our Cub Warden plan online. couple of land and we get some tokens. All the basics we have left. I guess I should be playing more basics with as easy as we can get them in this list. Um, then we just play another Cub Warden? I mean, make more... Honestly, that feels a little greedy. I feel like we should spread them around. Though that would get us... What? Two, four, six... Uh, each time. So yeah, that would get us four more creatures. Which is, isn't nothing. But if I equip one of these, then I get another 3-5, which is sort of nice. Uh, 
Oh, this is tough. Or I could do this. Turn something else into a 4-4. Four -four. Alright, we're gonna do this. Oh, can I not? Oh, I don't have the proper manas. Alright, let's go get some life in. Then we'll just... No, I'm gonna cancel that. Let's just do this. And this gives us blockers against whatever it is they may be doing. I mean, they can gain life, which is going to get annoying. So we are going to need to find something to kill a Kenrith. Mind you. Oh, I don't know why I thought they could get Yudaro. Because you can get... You attack with non-humans to get humans. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess they could have got Agent of Treachery. That would have been pretty bad for us. No, actually, I should have been able to do that last time. So I just used two mana. One, two. I had one white. And this is a goose. Yeah, I have food. That's weird. I wonder why it wouldn't let me do that. Huh. That is very strange. It definitely should have let me. Alright, they're going to draw a card. And do... Oh, I would love for you to attack with Kinrith. I will gladly block with multiple things. Like, don't think this Umari ain't coming to see you. Oh, actually, maybe not. I mean, if you're going to attack with multiple things, then we will... I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have eight next turn if I want it anyway. And I have this to block that. Yeah, whatever. Fight is one. Probably what he has. Oh, nope, didn't have it. That would have been really funny. Would have got the old two for none. Uh, okay. So here, we're gonna mutate this just so we can attack with the flyer. And if I play this. I only have one mana open, so that won't let me do what I want. So, I think the other plan will be make more blockers. And just diversify our threats. That's really the best way to go about this. Problem is, I don't want them to just steal our thing that has all the goods on it. But... Let's do this. Put that under. A little bit smaller. At least on the back end. Nothing to go get. Totally fine. Nothing to go get. Totally fine. <laughs> no basic lands. Alright. Flyers are paying off. And then we'll end the turn. Now we need to get the uh, the other guy that puts gives everything plus X plus X. So if we can play that on either creature, I mean, we're going to get two or three bonuses. That'd be great. All right. Tide Taker doesn't do much here. I mean, it is life game for the opponent. But that's about it. This is kind of the unfortunate part when you play Winota. I mean, if you get the the human parts instead of the non-human parts, you don't really do much. I'm just debating if this is where I just block it at this point. But I'm just going to say no blocks. I think I get more out of these other creatures ultimately. Especially if we can pump them up. Hey, there we go. There we go. That's what we were looking for. 
So what I might want to do, because this only costs three to do that, right? We can do this on the Paradise Druid. Actually, no. Let's do this way. Trying to see if they have a spell counter or something, if we can just bait it out before playing this. Or even if they have like a brazen bar or something, they'd play it here. Okay, there's the sabotage. Excellent, excellent. And then this stack has three on it, I believe. One, two, three, four. Oh, all right. Well, that's definitely going to be game then. Or damn close to it, because otherwise it's just going to be a ton of life anyway. Whole bunch of triggers. Uh, decline, because we have no more basics. No more basics. No more basics. And, yeah, even if they block our other dudes, we're getting in there. It's a mighty, mighty amount of damage. I mean, just in the air, that's 12. They block our three. They can block a seven and three sixes. And then still take 19. Plus, we gain whatever that is, like 50 life. Yep, we'd have been at 37. Yeah. All right. So that was a lot of fun, actually. Uh, the Abzan deck actually, or Abzan Mutate deck, might actually be one of my favorites of the four we've played so far. Uh, I don't know if there's a way we could play this without green i think that's the issue like when you're building these mutate decks you almost have to be base green because of the double color requirements and things being able to ramp up your mana fast enough to pay those extra costs so no matter what we probably could play in a green one but it's either probably this one or the john one maybe i liked them i liked them both pretty well so this this was fun and we beat like a wilderness reclamation deck a Minota deck some things i didn't think we were going to hold up against so that was pretty sweet uh, we did get lucky on a top deck there on one of them, but yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, what would I change about this list? I think if you're in an environment that has a bunch of burn decks or just really heavy aggro decks with removal, you probably want to swap out the goose for arboreal grazers. And it's possible you may want to cut some. Actually, the problem is looking at something like the ceratops. If you don't have a bunch of blue in your environment, you can move the Ceratops to a sideboard and then just play main deck Questing Beast, and that's probably fine too. But overall, this one was good. I like it. Oh, also as a reminder, hopefully you will like this video and hit the like button because that helps me out a bunch. And if you hadn't subscribed to the channel, you really should because I'm putting out content all the time. And make sure to hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever we have new decks up. But that's all we have for now. I'll see you next time.